guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Haley Dollar, and we're about to do some stuff. Woo! Stuff, I love stuff. Especially butt stuff. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Women that drink, what is it, Pinot Grigio, have a lot of problems. That's how you can spot a white woman with a lot of life problems. It's Pinot Grigio. So it tastes like asshole. And not like the good kind, when you're eating ass and just having a great night out. I think I literally have Pinot Grigio downstairs right now. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in drag, you could be having white woman problems. You could be in a crisis. You might be writing letters to people. You I never am. know. I am. <laughs> You know, I have never, I have one of these, but I have never used it. Really? Yes, I probably should. Mm -hmm. I have like this old school MAC brush that I literally use to put all of my foundation on with. Um, this is a really good one if you want to like adjust a brush for like mm -hmm. applying and blending foundation. Sounds really good. It's only $10 and it's from by Mabel. I love it. Well, see, that's the thing though, is I found like some of the brushes that are fairly like cheap compared to some of the designer ones. I mean, look at Kendall Jenner's stuff. It's crap and it's like a million dollars. And yet, you can go to like CVS and sometimes find like the bamboo ones that are like, cost nothing, but they like last forever. And I actually just got this. I'm not super happy with this foundation. It's a really great foundation. Mm -hmm. but it's a great foundation, but I am not happy with it. I got it, I've had this for, I wanna say a week and I've done mm. two faces with it and it's already like half gone. Oh no. Of like, it's such a pretty foundation, mm. but like, like when you're, sitting here and you're like like thinking about like how much foundation you're actually using to get like a nice coverage mm -hmm. it's like it's just a ridiculous amount of foundation that you have to use to get a good coverage oh my god you got pump it up gold <laughs> that takes me back to my cheerleading days when i had to have those like tight doll like curls like my hair is crunchy oh my gosh those like drill curl almost yes mm -hmm. Yeah, because I saw your last, the video that you were just featured in with your wife. Y'all were in Norfolk, right? Yeah, that's where we were performing. Okay. And it was filmed, like, the other stuff in, like, my house stuff, that was here. Hmm. And it was, like, this Yeah, I was, like, confused. I had to, like, that's why I was, like, asking for your address. I was, like, God, I hope I'm not driving to Norfolk today. Uh -huh. You know what I love is, you know what, as a stripper, men are so intuitive and perceptive. You know, I think I get told that, oh, my God, you look so tired. And that's what this is for. I'm like, I am fucking tired, you asshole. <laughs> Dead. I'm running on Adderall and like Red Bull. Like, this is my life. I've only had four Red Bulls since I got here. How long have you been here? Two hours. Yeah, God. So what questions do you have of me of being a stripper? Since I know apparently, oh apparently, you know, your your uh, form of drag is distasteful and you should have more respect for yourself, Mr. Ruger. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I've always wanted to like, I've never gotten to like have like a full conversation with a stripper about how they feel about their job. And, okay. Like, just tell me something about your job. Like, let's talk about it. Okay. Well, no one ever wants to talk about like strippers' jobs. I think it's just, it's so much fun. You know, when I first started, it was almost two years ago. And I'm not gonna lie, for the first two weeks, I like hated my okay. life because I had no fucking clue what I was doing. I couldn't even twerk. And then about two weeks in, um, these two girls, uh, Lexi and Autumn, came to me and said, white girl, we're gonna show you how to shake your ass. And the rest is just history. So every day I get up, I dress like I'm going to uh, my high school prom, big hair, big makeup, and I put on a show. It's amazing. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I feel like, honestly, and it's kind of a weird thing to say, but um, being a stripper kind of restored my faith in men because honestly, I've been through so many bad relationships mm -hmm. and things like that. I just thought men were just fucking god awful and they are for the most part. You know, it's just like, it's funny because I actually have customers that treat me better than, you know, boyfriends I've had in the past. And they're not even having sex with me. That's the amazing thing. And they never will. The end. <laughs> that's so, that's really like interesting because like, you would think that like, because you know how like a lot of guys get is that they feel like they paid some sort of like amount of money so they're entitled to things. Oh, and some do, and that's that's the funny thing about it is um, you'll have some that come in there, and it's usually the younger guys, and they'll try to argue with you because they'll try to say, oh, well, I'm not paying for a lap dance because I can just get that outside of here. And it's kind of like, well, then why did you come in 
Because it's sure as hell not to pay $10 for a beer that you could go get a six pack of at the gas station. Right. You know, there's nothing fancy about our beer. It's not like nipple flavored or something. But... Nipple flavored yeah. beer. <laughs> that would be an invention. Oh my gosh. Well, we'll get on it. We'll, we'll find a brewery. We'll like run it as a weekend promo. You'd be surprised how many weirdos out there would be like, ooh. That's the invention of 2018 that we need to get behind. We need to be funding that. Yes. Kickstarter. But no, it's funny because a lot of people, you know, and I think it's getting to the point in 2018 that a lot of girls are embracing, you know, they're, I don't know, they're really feeling their oats when it comes to me. you in the ear. Did you? I didn't even feel it. (laughs) Apparently I don't feel anything with my ears. But no, they're like just they're really feeling their oats and they don't really care if their families know or not. They're kind of open about it because being a stripper now, I mean, Totally yes, different than it was in the 90s. It is. There's a lot of less cocaine and fake titties. Sip sarbies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we just not going to talk about that part. <laughs> it's okay. No. I like to suck on ro- roast beef too. <laughs> I think it's like one of my main fetishes is body worship. And I think any entertainer can kind of feel that because when you're out there with the spotlight and just the music pumping and you like lose yourself, and that's what I think is like the best part about it is, is on nights when I don't feel like just completely exhausted, I get out there mm-hmm. and I'm like dancing and pretty much singing a lot of the songs while I'm doing upside down tricks on the pole and going everywhere. Like it's, it's fun and then people are just throwing money at you. Like, See, that's what I like about about when I get to do like go-go and stuff. Oh my gosh. Go-going is so fun and a lot of people don't, a lot of people like, they conflate go-go to stripping, which I think is interesting. Cause I'm like, they're definitely different. They are. Go-go's way easier. Yes. <laughs> But there was one guy, it was so funny, he came in and he was scared to death of my friend Salem and she is a satanic little witch bitch. I love her to death. She's probably the best dancer mm-hmm. up in Springfield. Um, but he literally said to her, cause he saw she had um, a pentagram tattoo and he was like, I came in here looking for a good Catholic girl. Ah! To the titty bar. And she was like, what kind of good Christian or Catholic girl do you think? Okay, sir. And so she, for a good Catholic girl. Oh, oh my God. God! No, but these men have those kind of unrealistic expectations. Like, or what do you think that like Grandma would let me do that if I was a good Catholic girl? Uh, but are the men that'll come up to you and be like, "So, do you want to make some money?" And nope. I'm gonna and I'm gonna be like, oh, "I love making money. Doing what? <laughs> Having sex with me?" Ow! Well, sweetheart, unless it's like we'll start ta- like give me twenty thousand dollars and we'll start talking about it. Right. But not until I see that Monty, hunty. But no, I've had men offer me, you know, a couple hundred to a couple thousand. And, you know, sometimes it's pretty appealing. Um, don't get me wrong, because I mean most of the time, you know, you fuck people for free and then you just get fucked. But uh I mean god, I'm still waiting on you know Chris Pratt to walk through the door or Channing Tatum and offer me like ten thousand dollars. I mean Well Channing Tatum is now single, I so know. Your dreams high. might come true. I imagine mine. Mm. He was a stripper down in Florida, so we have that much in common. Hi. <laughs> I love your wedding ring. Oh my god, this is gorgeous. Thank you. All. Beautiful. They match. Mm. I love yellow gold. Me too. You know, honestly, at first I didn't really believe that you were married. I thought you just photoshopped a female version of yourself because in some pictures y'all look so similar. I feel like it was one of those like, uh, who are some of the celebrities they say are like the same people? Like uh, Justin Bieber and like Selena Gomez, they're trying to say they're like the same person because they've never, or something, something weird. You know, it's funny that like people do say that Justin Bieber and Selena look alike. Mm -hmm. And we're like a really good like example of that because He's a white boy, and she is a half white, half Latina, mm-hmm. and I'm white, and she's half white, half Latina. Yeah, but no, like literally in pictures, like I was like, did he Photoshop himself? He's not married. Like, what is going on yeah, here? That's a lot of people have actually like very seriously accused, um, accused me of like staging my entire wedding like photo album. That's fucking amazing. Like, like, that, would, that would take a lot of work and talent. A but I lot mean, of money and a lot of extras. But if Megan is here, like, you she's know. Oh, wow. Well, if she's here, because remember, I don't know if she exists. I haven't seen her yet. Oh, yeah. You could have staged this. It, it is staged. She's a crisis actor. <laughs> she's a crisis actor that, um, because we're in a downtime right now, you know, like there hasn't been a crisis. Times, in, time, times are hard. Times are hard for crisis actors. It's been a whole like week without anything crazy happening. So she's a little bit run down on money. So, you know, she 
in the off time, on the off season of crises, of crises, <laughs> she pretends to be my wife. Oh. And oh that's... Goodness. Well, yeah, because I was always curious about it, and then watching your video kind of enlightened me, because I think, you know, anyone that's, you know, I don't care who you are, you know, perception is everything, and when you see someone and what they do and how they carry this, until you get to know them, you're kind of like left to your own imagination. Yeah, and I remember, is a... Yeah, and I remember seeing you for the first time and just thinking, oh, fun little, you know, gay boy. And then I saw that you were married and I was like, I wonder if that's real. Because, you know, a lot of men... A lot of people on Facebook will go and have, like, Facebook marriages and stuff. Oh, yeah. Reason. Or even, like, go go as far as, like, have a um, staged marriage for their family due to expectations. Because people mm. still do that, even though it's 2018. So I was, like, so curious. And then when I saw your video, I felt so enlightened as to that. I think it's just incredible that you're so open about it and willing to share that with the world, like... Oh my gosh, about that. So many people on the internet are like, she's being coerced into the relationship and stuff like you that. You kidnapped her now? Yeah. We've known each other since we were 14. She's, she's escaped. I can hear. <gasps> she speaks! Come on in. Uh, Don't yeah. coerce her. Right. She needs to come on her right. own. Right. <laughs> I can just imagine, go ahead and come in, Megan, we have candy. <laughs> <laughs> She's Hi. real. She is real. Yeah, I am not a segment. I have to ask. Come closer. I have to ask you something. Yes. Are you Are you being coerced? Are you safe? Because <laughs> apparently the internet believes you're being oh, held hostage. Oh, isn't that crazy? Oh my god, yeah. I'm dying. She doesn't know what she signed up for. She has her change in his basement. basement. I'm like, I. I only let her out for documentaries. Yeah. All right. <laughs> From nine to five, she's in the basement. It's her job. She cleans. That's it. It's and she true. cooks. Yes. <laughs> That's also where we keep all the illegal immigrants. It's true. Half oh, my wow. family is down there. And Amazing. she's a... They're so quiet. They really are. But, really, you know, really unconventional for Puerto Rican families, but, you know, we've conditioned them. Yeah, she has this... <laughs> well, see, see, that's the thing, though. She's, she's Puerto Rican, and I have actually some Puerto Rican people in my family, yeah. and they are crazy. So y'all are wrong thinking she's the one being chained. It is Jay is the one being held hostage here. Only sometimes. She will <laughs> Get over here and do my eyebrows. Back to brow. Yes. Back to the basement for you, Megan. Right. Ah! <laughs> now that we know you exist. It's true. Did you tell her about the, the staged wedding photo? We were just talking about I that. I said that would be so impressive if he could do all of that on his own. But we were just getting into how you're a crisis actor and this is your off season because there's no crises right now. That's what, I, that's what I did in my spare time as I hung out at a, another strip club today because I just can't get enough of it apparently. <laughs> Hey, we all have our thing. Yeah. I do drag. I love your drag though, it's so different. Thank you, I try really hard to be different. That's, a, that's the most try hard thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I try very, very hard. hard to be different. That's like darkness like edgelord. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> I'm such an edgelord sometimes, like the email comes out like strong as fuck. She's a hologram. I knew it. Yep. I can't wait you, you fucking kill me. She's a fucking hologram. Not real at all. Hashtag Photoshop. Hashtag, yeah. Hashtag notice how we didn't appear on camera at the same time. <gasps> oh my god, I knew it! I called it! <laughs> how do you throw your voice like that? Years and years of training and talent. Coming up with the whole conspiracy of being able to uh, be in two places at once mm -hmm. took a lot of skill and time and effort because, you know, like, imagine having to do this in high school. Mm. At least you had multiple lockers you could just jump and change into. Kind of like Clark Kent and Superman. You were just like Super Megan. Yeah, I think the hardest part was like getting enough hall passes to run back and forth between classes so that I could be present in both classes at the same time. I can't believe people said that you keep her like chained in the basement. I mean, that's what you do at Fallout, maybe. Ah! On good weekends. Only on the good weekends. Oh my gosh, there's actually a fetish party in DC tomorrow. Right. I was thinking about going, I don't know, maybe. Depends on the weather. <laughs> I might go to this fetish party, I don't know, it depends on the weather. It might snow. It's like 70 degrees today. There might snow tomorrow. Like, Virginia makes no sense. Welcome to Virginia. So then what would you say that you identify as? Like, if you had to put a definition on it. In regards to what? Uh, everything. I'm asexual Asian. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? So, Asian. We'll start with Asian. Okay. That means that I don't particularly subscribe or feel I fit into any particular gender category. 
which on the gender spectrum, you have a few different um, male and female on the two opposite ends, mm -hmm. and everything in between is non-binary. Okay. Would you prefer they refer to you as, like, instead of he or she, like, they? Is that how that works? Or... Um, that's, like, more of a non-binary thing. Mm -hmm. uh, with people who are agender, yeah. there's usually more than one preferred pronoun. I actually don't personally have... Because, I guess because of how long I've been doing drag and the mm -hmm. way, like, I can, like growing, but not growing up, but like as like in my young adult life, mm -hmm. because of the way I kind of like interacted with people, yeah. I kind of just don't have a preferred pronoun anymore because I was a drag queen mm -hmm. and I'm also, a, I'm also, you know, like assigned male at birth. So a lot of people, are, you know, a lot of non-binary or age gender people will have like he, they, mm -hmm. which I'm totally fine with both he and they, but I'm also fine with she. Okay. So if you someone were to call me she, I really wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that some people, it's a very sensitive subject for them. And honestly, and some of my friends that are trans or things like that, I can understand why it is. Because some people can be so nasty and purposefully misgender them, you know, as to hurt their feelings when they've had to go through so much. So that's why I'm always curious and I always like to ask people, um... Because, you know, I don't think anybody, unless you're a complete dick, wants to, you know, upset someone over, you know, pronouns and such. Dark brows. I love, I'm a fan of a dark brow, even on people with light colored hair, because, mm -hmm. like, obviously, I'm naturally blonde. Mm -hmm. Um. Lucky. Despite my very, very dark brows. Lucky bitch. So you don't end up looking like you got throat bumped by Chewbacca at a gay bar. He's so hairy. Yeah. <laughs> being throw poked by Chewbacca I've at a gay wondered, bar. I've always wondered though, like what kind, like what would Chewbacca's dick? Would it look like a dog dick? That would just creep me out, like the red, red rocket. rocket. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now, 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 now all these conservative people are gonna be like, they're talking about bestiality. Ah! How does this have anything to do with makeup? Oh my gosh, I've been accused of literally everything in this in the comment sections of that video, like bringing up like strange sexual practices. Like what? Like. Oh my gosh, like, someone in, like, the video was, like, how can you, like, how can this, like, um, this channel be promoting, uh, homosexuals waving dildos at children? Wait, did you, did you wave a dildo at a child? No! I didn't think there so. are no dildos, there are no children. What? Like, I'm like, what? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, where is this coming from? Right here. This must be one of your dildos that you're waving at a child. There you go. How that, literally, you that was actually what was in my pants during the entire video. I thought, and see, everybody else says it's socks. It's really like a Zelda sword. It's literally a weapon. <laughs> do it for the vine. I miss vine. I do too. It was vine so was the great. Shit. Oh. Except for, like, it, what makes me sad is, like, a lot of those vine stars, some of them went on to do <coughs> a lot of. <coughs> I hate him. And it's so sad because as a Caucasian woman, I find him adorable, but like I've watched his like latest videos and stuff and it's just like- He's I, trash. He's just like a spoiled rotten little fucking brat and he's on, he feels like he's untouchable and people just placate him mm -hmm. because they want to be associated with it. They want to like get their mm -hmm. like feet dipped into the fame juice. And I, I think it's actually just really freaking sad. You're being a fucking shithead. Here's a Xanax, calm down. <laughs> Not a Xanax. Oh gosh, Valium. Here's a Valium. Calm down. Stop being a grown man trying to play Pokemon in Tokyo. <laughs> I get like this. I'm like, oh, I can be doing my makeup right now. <laughs> How dare you come into my house and sit in my makeup chair and wear my makeup. <laughs> God, I, think, I don't think there hasn't been anything we haven't talked about. We've, we've covered bestiality. We've covered, you know, Megan in the basement. Logan Paul. Crisis actors. Crisis actors. This has been a very diverse video. It has. It's a topic for everyone. What else is there to discuss? Jesus. I have a complete indifference towards sex. Okay. And that sex is like, to me is, like I said in my video, is like mm -hmm. the equivalent of like any other kind of activity that okay. would be done. Like it's like playing video games or um, mm -hmm. like having like a social event or something like that, you know? But a sexy social event. A sexy social I dig it. Um, that was my birthday party last year, actually. Hey! Sure. No, I had a fetish theme party. I'm pretty sure everybody got laid except for me, but I did oh. take a really good nap around for him. Oh no, it wasn't a bad thing. Like, literally, like, the two guys that I invited essentially, you know, come have sex with me, both bailed, and I was so bummed. 
And like literally I like at 3 a.m. I was so drunk off of moonshine and everybody was having sex everywhere and I found this comforter and I just rolled myself, I burritoed myself into it and I fell asleep on the floor and I woke up to this old middle-aged fat man, butt naked, standing over me like dick swinging and he was like, I was just checking on you to make sure you were okay. And I was like, I bet you were. I was like, get the fuck away from me. And he was like, I'm just trying to be. I was like, I don't care, go away. Go away. And I took my jacket. That's why I did it. That's because, you know, I knew I was like shit faced. And so if somebody could have gotten me out of my Chipotle style burrito bag. You're not taking my cookies today. Not tonight. Not today, Satan. But yeah, no, he's like, I'm just trying to be nice. No, you're not. Get away. I know what you're doing. Ah! I was in middle school once. <laughs> I consider myself to be bisexual. Oh. I get very sexual people body things. Oh. You want daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Do I want daddy? Do I? Well. Oh. oh my goodness. Dead screaming! No, my um, my like best friend and assistant Mark. Oh my gosh, like he would he'll do that when he gets drunk. He can't anymore because his voice is too deep. But like we had this party, and we didn't mean it to be a stripper party. But like uh -huh. five strippers showed up, and him and two of them got into a screaming match in the middle of my living room in between the kitchen. They were screaming, "Oh my pussy!" And I was like all night. And my neighbors literally the next morning were like, "So whose vagina?" Miss Vanjie. So you can either use Daddy by Jeffree Star or you can you can pop someone's cherry and use the dick stick. You couldn't do a video without bringing penis into it, could you? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, when you put it up next to my head, it actually looks like life size. Like there we go, like like ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through a crisis now. I'm having dick-shaped like lipstick put into Quick, my mouth. Quick, Megan! It's time for you to act! <laughs> I realize you vaped because I'm like, I heard the noise. Oh, one of my bosses just said I need to come up to Arkansas and work up there. I can only imagine what the people would be like in Arkansas because that's like Bible Belt City. No, they want the satanic girl. They're like, they're like, yeah, show me that pedogram pussy. <laughs> show me that the pedogram pussy. You're trying so hard! Okay. Okay, together. I, at least I didn't use the titty beauty blender. The what? I used to have like a beauty blender that was a titty. That's amazing. I really miss it. I think I'm like done with musicians. I've like kind of dated or like seen a few of them. <laughs> all of them. I'm all of them. No, actually, and it was so funny because it was like my fantasy of my scene girl years. I actually hooked up with a lead singer of a band. That's, that's every scene kid's fantasy is to fuck a, a musician. And uh, it was actually really, really bad. Oh yeah, because they're they're like a musician, so they don't really have to like do good. They just have to be. Well, no, it was more like, um, like I don't know. I guess you have like this fantasy in your head, and like when it comes to like men, I tend to be more of a sub, depending on if I'm at my bar, I'm kicking the crap out of people and doing dominatrixing. But like literally, this guy was like, "Oh my God, you're so good at this!" Ah, and I was like. No, I'm not! Stop ruining my 16 year old fantasy! Oh. Alright, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Go follow Haley on Instagram. What's your handle? Haley Dollar. Haley Dollar. I'll link it in the description down below as well. I look phenomenal. Look at this, look at this mug. Like. Beat for the gods. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. I am a stripper from the.